leadership excellence, human growth manual, one day. Okay. So, so uh, um, if, I, if I'm introducing this thing, um, uh, then I would do the following. Um, mm -hmm. uh, have you both got the document open? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, so I, I have just only mobile phone, so I think I... I will discuss all right, all right, okay, later. But I, I will yeah. send you. I'm recording what we're doing. I'll create a, a YouTube video of this, and then I'll, uh, uh, you know, I'll give you a link to the the, the, the YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. So the first uh, the first page. Just make check of the time here. Um, the the the, fir the first page is. Uh, um, uh, so, you just the introduction to care and growth model. So the page you start working with is on page two. When you introduce yeah. this process, the first thing you've got to tell people is that it is based on on primary research that was conducted in the eighties, mm -hmm. and it does actually ask people to do to 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 revisit assumptions. This program, you're going to revisit your assumptions. Yep. Then you're going to ask people to record their assumptions. On page two, you're going to ask them, what does the word leadership mean to you? And they need to put an answer to that. So, okay. so uh, on page two, you need to, first they need to answer page two. Uh, what's this, um, what does the word leadership mean to you? Then they need to answer page three, how do you measure the success of an enterprise? Then they answer, then, then you ask them, uh, now this is not in the manual, but it is, um, it's a, you know, you don't have to do that. So just ignore what I've just said. Then you ask them to also fill in page six, the person I would work for willingly. That's on page six of the manual. Mm -hmm. um, there you go, page six. Uh, uh, Boss of heaven. Sorry? It's boss of heaven, like the person I would... The boss from heaven, yeah. From yeah, yeah. Really. Well, not the boss from heaven. The, yeah. the boss that you... If you could construct your boss, who would that boss be? Yeah, you, okay. I think we're looking down. The first step is phase, phase two. The second step is phase six, right? Uh, the, the, first step, the first step is page two. Two. The second step is page three. Okay. The third step is page six. Six, yep. Okay. And then the last step is page, um, uh, uh, this, this machine is very slow, because I'm running five things here. The, the, la the last step is page 30, 26, the very large page. So they fill those 26. things in before you start working. All right. Before you start okay. working, they start, they, they write that. Then okay. you get them to de right? that's right. Then you get them to debrief yes, page yes. two. And page two is the you know what does the word leadership mean to you? Uh, and you okay. on uh, on what, you basically get the line of text that says from the group that leadership is about achieving a result through people. And for now you don't judge that you just accept that on page two. Then on page three, you ask them to describe the success of an enterprise, and that exercise then ends up in the cake diagram. You remember the cake, the uh -huh. surplus diagram on page three? Yes, yes. I read that. Yes. And then if you say, then you say to the group, look, understand that if you if the if you if you define leadership as achieving a result through people, and you say leadership is you know, successful enterprises produce surpluses, which is based on people giving more than what they're taking. You've got to understand that these two ways of looking at things are completely irreconcilable. If you if you think leadership is about achieving a result through people, you will you will not create people who are here to give to the enterprise. You'll create people who are here to take. So that already you start off the process with a bit of a shock. That they can see that mm -hmm. these two, that you just say these two views are not reconcilable. 
Mm -hmm. once once you've done that on page three you go to pay to the power strategy so then obviously people are going to want an explanation they're going to ask you so why on earth do you say that why do you say that these ways of looking at things are not not reconcilable then you say well let's have a look at what you do to get people to do things for you your own power strategies you get them to fill in the power mm -hmm. strategies on page four and page five you get them to rank them and you get them to uh, to choose. I mean, sorry, you get them to choose the five most important ones, and then you debrief those. Um, and based on that, you create the the have to boss picture. You remember, you've got the have to boss and the want to boss picture. Mm -hmm. So on the left, the have to boss mm -hmm. picture. You normally tease that out of that content. Um, and then, oh. then you say, so, so actually, even if the person uses, it doesn't matter if the person is using uh, um, either compulsive or persuasive means, if their intent is to get something from you, you'll resist them or you'll rebel. Um, you, then, you then say, say, say well, who's the boss you're going to work for because you want to? You debrief the process on page six. Um, and so you have on two flip charts, you've got the one to boss, which you've pulled out of four and five and the have to boss. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I beg your pardon. The have to boss, which you've pulled out of four and five and the one to boss that you pulled out of page six as two independent flip charts on the, on, on, you know, on, on two different boards. Yeah. And then you ask people, what's the difference? And you know, the story after that, they'll say the difference is intent. And then you say, well, and, and then you use the, the experience piece when, you, when you're exploring this to do the means and ends exercise. The means and ends exercise, that's on page seven. And then you say, well, well, you know, let's just understand how this intent thing works. It looks at the issue of trust. And then you do the boss from heaven and the boss from hell story. And the key issue there is who's the boss you're going to trust and who's the boss you're not going to trust? Who's the boss that you trusted in the past and who's the boss you didn't trust in the past? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you... So, uh, let's so, go. Let's yes. go. Um, in the page seven, in the page seven, yeah. um, the situation I understand mean is like um, pe um, people in its result and, and vice versa, right? Yeah. But implication is like the intent, right? Or get, That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So you, you, what you normally do is it's actually in the debrief. You, you explore that in the debrief of the, um, of the, uh, of the power models. Okay. Because you remember debrief when, you, when okay. you debrief the power models, you say, well, let's, let's have a look at the power models that you use. And then normally people use yeah, the, 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 the persuasive rather than the compulsive power models. And then you say, well, why? And, this? and then, you, then you start writing on the board. Well, if you use compulsive models, people are going to resist you. And then you say, well, let's have a look at what's the okay. difference between compulsive and persuasive. Then you go through the list until you get to experience. Because then what you want people to acknowledge is actually the difference between compulsion and persuasion is not that easy. Because most of these you can use in either a compulsive or a persuasive way. And you use the experience example to do that means and end, ends exercise on, um, on page seven. So you remember, you'll, po you'll pick two people in the room. Let's say, uh, I, so you, you both, uh, you and, and Ud are in the room. And I say to you, uh, I say, Ud, in 1980, I did what you have to do and what I did work. Don't argue with me. Shut up and go and do what I did. Um, Yod, in 1980, I did what you have to do. It might be useful to you take a look at it. Do you remember that story? You, yeah. use, you use the de that yeah. material to get this means and ends exercise on page seven sorted. Okay, okay, I remember that. Yeah. And then you say, well, 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 clearly the difference between the boss that you're going to work for because you want to and the boss that you work with is not their behavior. Because here you, the, person, mm -hmm. the person that you work for because you have to does both compulsive and persuasive things. So there's a problem in how we define leadership. If you define leadership as being here to achieve a result through people, then you will only you'll, you'll you'll either get resistance or rebellion so well then therefore let's have a look at the boss you'll work for because you want to then you do the thing on page six and so it becomes mm -hmm. the right hand side um a flip chart the boss that you'll work for because you want to uh then you you to 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 kind of demonstrate these things about intent 
you, you do the exercise on page 8. And then everything else is just a summary of that. Then the, most of the rest of the process is really around the four axioms. In a one day, I don't make a lot of noise about the first axiom. I sort of try and avoid it almost. Because sometimes you pressed for time. The, the second axiom, you understand how that works, eh? The second axiom is basically, is, is, is you construct the second axiom on the basis of the getting the team to do a summary of themes on page uh, six. Um, and then you pull the care and growth criteria out of that. Uh, that's step mm -hmm. one. Uh, step two, you look at the implications, which is page 15. In looking at the implications, you want to end up with fundamentally with a coaching metaphor. And you want to say what the coach does is exactly the opposite of how we see leaders today. The coach does not use the person as his means to get a job done. The, you, per, the, the coach uses the task as his means to enable the person. In other words, he doesn't achieve people through results. He, achieve, he doesn't achieve results through people, rather. He achieves people through results. Um, axiom 3, page 3, is basically what you want to cover. And I'll just tell you, because this is the stuff you'll understand easily. The, f the first thing you want to cover is, is the incremental suspension of control. The second thing that you want to cover mm -hmm. is the, is the uh, in each increment, you've got to do the means, ability, and accountability for the person to be able to do the job. And you use the fishing analogy to make that plain. And then you, you, then you discuss the difference between the hard mistake and the soft mistake. We're now going to page 20. And um, then, you, uh, then you look at the whole issue of control. So um, you're, now, you're now kind of around lunchtime, um, mid lunch or mid-afternoon. The last thing you want to do with this team is to look at m the whole issue of maturity, that growth means making, uh, making people mature, which is the page 24. And, then, um, and then, then the last thing you want to debrief on is, uh, is this whole thing that, you know, if, if you look at the reason, people's reasons for going to work, it's always in these four categories, security, mm -hmm. fulfillment, power, and harmony. And the whole insight yeah. that those four things are actually the product of how your intent operates. So you conclude, therefore, by saying, if you think of an organization as an inverted cone, if you took a horizontal section through that cone, you'd be dealing with a set of team, uh, a team, peers. That set of that group of peers only succeeds when the individual is there to make a contribution. That's the cake metaphor. If you took a vertical section through that cone, you'd be looking at leadership. Um, and that organization only succeeds if the bosses are seen to be there for subordinates, not the other way around. In other words, the bosses are there to care for and grow their subordinates. Both of these variables intersect at the level of the individual because each individual occupies both a place in the hierarchy and occupies a place in the team. And what we say to the individual is, listen, come to work to make a contribution to anybody other than yourself. And people can find that threatening. And what this last exercise tells you is actually when you act, when you do this, you're not acting in anybody else's interest. You're actually acting in your own interest. Because when you construct your behavior on the intent to give, you become secure, you become fulfilled, you get a sense of power, and you have a sense of harmony with the world around you. And then that's it. That's the end of the process. Yeah. You with me? And, and at the end, I remember that when, when we conduct in detail, at the end, after you, you do that four quadrant, um, macro money app, leader, consumer, and world you saw? Yeah, we're not going to do that. We do that? You don't do that. Uh -huh. You can see yeah. you don't, you we don't, don't, do that. You don't how, have the time how, how to do that How can to the reason for going to work? Well, what you do with the reasons for going to work is you don't use it diagnostically. Hmm? If you look at those reasons for going to work, uh, Kunyad, you'll always find them. There's four categories. You can, all of the reasons that people go to work, they either go to work for security. So they'll say things like, I go to work to earn a living, etc., etc., etc. Or they go to work for fulfillment. I go to work for the learning, for the challenge, for the growth. Or they go to work for power. I go to work to pursue my career, whatever. Or they go to work. Um, for a sense of making a contribution to the world for harmony. 
Yeah. Those four things, the, they're not going to get at work. Those, are, those four things, gift. they take to work. They manufacture that inside mm -hmm. their skin. Because those four things are the product of how their intent operates. Mm. So you use that. Mm. You, you, don't make, you just make that point. You don't use that content, in this case, diagnostically. You use that content to make okay. a point to say that the reason why you should serve your colleague at work and the reason why you should serve your subordinate at work is that when you do that, you construct your intent on the basis of the intent to give. And when you construct your intent on the basis of the intent to get the, the, the product for you, the effect for you is that you become secure, you become fulfilled, you get a sense of harmony with the okay. world around you, and you become powerful. You're not doing this for anybody else, okay. you're doing this for yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's where you need to start. Think, you don't I have to I go further it. than that. Yeah, I, I, I think I got it. Right. Because um, that, that's, that is a good idea to avoid a diagnostic because I think for only one day, if you do the dia yeah, diagnostic, yeah, you're going to get started. Uh, people going to yeah, get confused. Yeah, yeah. This is already yeah. a full day, eh? You do this for a day, it's, it's yeah. a long day. Yes. You, that's why I'm saying don't make too much noise of the first axiom. Try and cut that corner because I found that, that you get stuck and then eventually you run out of time. So that's a good one to cut. And 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 is how 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 you skip on that is is quite so easy like that like you you come to the yeah, you just, you just, you you just ignore it. You how, say, what what is your technique that you're talking about first? You, you just ignore it. You go because you can go straight from the you, you know let's <coughs> let's understand what's inside the boss that you're going to work for because you want to. Because people are really fascinated with that, and so you can go straight from from that to page fourteen. You can just skip over page 13 if you're running out of time. You just ignore it. Yeah. And normally groups don't pick it up. Mm. No. So I, so I can like take it out? If I get this, this manual from you, I, I just you can take it skip out this thing yeah. out. You can then, take it out, yeah. And, and then I, I just read, uh, I just changing the, the name of Axiom and something else that, that people got. Yeah, that's right, bother. of course. I mean, you must make the thing yeah, work. I mean, you'll, have to trans yeah. you'll have to translate it into Thai anyhow. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so you've got license yeah. to panel beat it a bit, yeah. Okay. Okay. The... This process is a really powerful sales process because it gives people enough of a real taste of care and growth for people to realize just how unique the idea is. And um, that, that's how you score clients. That's how we've been scoring clients. <laughs> Have you ever heard that the client asks you about, hey, this is a very good concept, but, but, but how we can implement that? How? Yeah, well, you can say, well, I mean, the way to, the, the practical implement, implementation uh, concept are, are all, they, they're all actually, you start reading that out of the third axiom. It's the means, ability, and accountability. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you create the conditions where every person in the line has the means to do what's required of them, is able to do what's required of them, and is actually held accountable? Our role as mm -hmm. consultants is to help you to pull that off over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think I, I got what, what I want. Okay. Do this. This is all right. Yeah. Uh, one, one, one quick question, Esco. Um, many clients